Hello, my name is Megan Chemnitz. I am an emergency medicine resident at Duke University Medical Center. Today I will be reviewing organophosphate poisoning. Following this brief presentation, you will be able to identify potential organophosphate toxicity based on clinical evaluation and initiate appropriate management. Whether in an urban or rural setting, this classic toxidrum must be on your radar. Organophosphates are, in fact, all around us. There are 3 million annual exposures worldwide. Organophosphates are found in common household items as well as industrial farming chemicals. They are in household ant and roach sprays and in insecticides. Historically, they have also been used in acts of war and bioterrorism. These chemicals can be absorbed in several different ways. They can be inhaled, such as with nerve gas or pesticide exposure, ingested with intentional ingestions for self-harm or in young children, or absorbed through the skin, such as with farming exposure to pesticides. Within the past 20 years, Organophosphates have been the root cause of mass casualty events outside of active combat. In 1995, members of a religious cult released sarin gas on multiple subway lines in downtown Tokyo. Thousands of people were affected, 13 were dead, and 50 severely injured. The link below will direct you to a news report on the incident. Those exposed to toxic levels of organophosphates will develop symptoms in minutes to days after their initial exposure. The classic presentation includes copious frothy secretions, tachycardia, meiosis, or pinpoint pupils, and an odor resembling garlic. Aside from the garlic odor, this combination of symptoms fits a specific toxidrum. Can you identify it? Organophosphates act by binding and inactivating acetylcholinesterase. This is an enzyme that breaks down acetylcholine. By inhibiting the breakdown, this reaction actually leads to an excess of acetylcholine and subsequently cholinergic toxicity. Let us call upon our basic pharmacology. The cholinergic system consists of two main receptors, muscarinic and nicotinic. When activated, these receptors are responsible for increased secretions, meiosis, sweating, and smooth muscle contractions. Several mnemonics exist specifically for the muscarinic effects, including sludge, BBB, and dumbbells. Pause the lecture and see how many you can fill in on your own. Sludge, BBB, stands for salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastric emesis, bronchorrhea, bronchospasm, and bradycardia. Dumbbells stands for the same things in a different order as you see on the right. The combination of bronchoconstriction, increased respiratory secretions, and neuromuscular weakness ultimately results in respiratory failure and death if untreated. Organophosphate toxicity is a clinical diagnosis. You may test your suspected diagnosis by seeing if the symptoms change with appropriate treatment. Confirmatory lab studies may take days to come back, far too long to guide initial therapy. In an emergency department, 
or mass casualty setting, one can easily become overwhelmed. When faced with critically ill patients, or a situation where you feel uncomfortable or do not have a good idea what is going on, keep it simple and follow your ABCs. In this particular case of suspected toxic exposure, we modify this algorithm slightly to ensure the safety of others caring for those affected. Decontamination is the first and most critical step. Remove all clothing from the patient. Irrigate to remove any potential chemicals left on the skin. You need to make sure to keep yourself and other patients in the area safe from exposure. Airway and breathing. Ensure that the patient has a patent and protected airway and is actively moving air in and out of their lungs. Circulation. Evaluate for a pulse, secure IV access, and get them on a cardiac monitor. Disability. Perform a brief neurologic evaluation and evaluate for their mental status to determine any other contributing injuries. Exposure. Should have already been covered in the decontamination phase, but again, reassure that the patient is undressed and cleared of any continued exposure. Atropine is the primary treatment option in organophosphate poisoning. Atropine is a muscarinic inhibitor and will compete with the high levels of acetylcholine for the receptor sites. Dosing is weight-based and may reach very high levels. For adults, start with 2 to 5 mg IV and titrate to the clearing of respiratory secretions and bronchoconstriction. You may need to collaborate with other nearby healthcare facilities to secure a large enough supply of atropine, particularly in mass casualty settings where there are multiple affected people. In summary, organophosphate poisoning occurs with exposure to certain pesticides and nerve agents. Clinical presentation resembles cholinergic toxicity. Can you recall what the mnemonics stand for? Sludge BBB, salivation, lacrimation, urination, defecation, gastric emesis, bronchorrhea, bronchospasm, and bradycardia. Or dumbbells, defecation, urination, bronchorrhea, bronchospasm, bradycardia, emesis, lacrimation, and salivation. I know I'm repeating myself, but that will come up at some point in your career. Critical actions with organophosphate toxicity include decontamination and stabilization. Treat with atropine. Start with 2 to 5 mg IV in adults and titrate as needed to decrease respiratory secretions. In the United States, always remember that you have the Poison Control Network as a very valuable resource. Thank you.